Man, it's just fun to be in God's house. Well, if you don't know me, my name is Keith. Want to thank you for being here today. Want to say that God has a good plan and that your presence here is not an accident. It's not by chance that you're here today. You may not know what your purpose is, but I believe that God has a good plan for your life. And today is another day in the story that he's writing. Thank you for being here. It might be your first time. Thank you so much for coming out to Blaze Church. And we just believe it always takes courage for anybody to come to church, especially if you've never been to church before. So welcome home. I mean, you came and, and I mean, you had to overcome some things. Someone said, you want to come to church? He said, maybe. And then they said, Blaze Church. He said, is that a real church? Blaze Church. <laughs> yes, it's a real church. Okay. Oh, by the way, we meet in the basement. What? Um, so just thank you so much for taking a bold step coming into this space. I believe God wants to meet you today. Uh, I want to start off with a quote by Mark Twain. If I can, why not? The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. <laughs> Some of you guys thought, and the day you die. <laughs> no, the day you find out why. Now, I would add to that, there's a third important day, and it's the day you're born again. And I believe that even today, if you don't know what that means, you're about to find out. As God has a good plan for your life. But I do believe the truth of what Mark Twain is saying. All of us are on a why quest. Say why quest. <laughs> why quest. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Why do I exist? Do I have value? Have I ruined my life to the degree where God can't use me anymore? These are the questions we ask. And today I want to start off by telling you, you were created on purpose for a purpose. <laughs> Would you say that with me? Created on purpose for a purpose. You have reason. You have purpose. You are not an accident. God has a good plan for your life. And if you won't amen me, I'll amen me. Amen, Keith. That was good, Keith. Amen. God's got a good plan. And if I can for 25 minutes somehow implore you and urge you to come to the one who made you and know you, then I have done what I'm called to do today. God loves you and you have purpose. So today we're going to continue Bible stories for grown-ups, and we're going to discover through a Bible story why we believe God has a purpose for our lives. How many have been enjoying this series so far? We started in Noah's Ark. Last week we were in the lion's den. And today I want to talk about my guy, muscles on muscles, the strongest of all men in the Old Testament. If you know his name, go ahead and say it. Now say it like he's a WWE fighter. Here comes Samson. He's coming in. We're going to talk about Samson. And we're going to discover through the life of Samson the purpose that God has for every single one of us. Let me give you a little history. At this time in Israelite history, the people of Israel have just entered the promised land. Moses is dead. Joshua is dead. And the people have been given clear instruction. When you get to the promised land, drive out. Say drive out. Drive out the pagan nations. Don't allow their practices, their idolatry, their sinfulness to stay. Drive them out. It's clear. So do you know what Israel does? Anything but that. <laughs> because like Israel, there are times God tells me, do this. And I say, but that's hard. I don't know if I want to love that person right now, Jesus. I don't know if I want to forgive them. I, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, I know you call me to give and to serve and to pray, but I just don't know. And he's like, but I'm clear. Drive out. And they don't drive out. Instead, they intermarry. 
they adopt their practices, they worship their gods and their idols. And we read a verse that should cause us, Blaze Church, to pause and realize why we put so much into next gen here. Here's the verse. After that generation died, that's the generation with Joshua, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. I'm just telling you, as long as Blaze Church is in this community, as long as we have the privilege to be the dream team here, our value of next gen will not diminish. We will put emphasis and resources towards the next generation because millennial, Gen Z, Gen Alpha need to not ever have it said about them that they didn't know the Lord or remember what he's done. So if you hear some noise bumping from that side of the wall, if you hear some feet pattering down, the, if you hear a baby saying amen through a cry in this space, please don't, I can't concentrate. Why we got curtains, we should get walls. I know, we're trying to work on walls. It's, kind of, it's landmark, okay? Soundproof walls everywhere. We invest in the next gen. You say amen, because they matter. And we won't be a generation that gets, I've been using this term lately, adopted it from a pastor, Matt Chandler, old and crusty. Just let that, you don't want to be old and crusty. You don't want to be disgruntled about things. You want to be a champion for the next generation. Israel didn't, and the generation grew up that did not know the Lord, and they start to lose battles, and they start to cry out to God for help. And it says, then the Lord raised up judges, say judges, to rescue the Israelites from their attackers. Now, I know if you're like me, when you hear the word judges, you think Judge Judy. Come on, where are my daytime television people at? I remember sick as a kid, whenever I had to stay home from school, I was going to get to watch Judge Judy. She came on, have a little chicken noodle soup, Campbell's, you know, the good stuff, and watch Judge Judy. This is not the kind of judge we're talking about. <laughs> the book of Judges, which is in the Old Testament, it's where we are, and the judges themselves don't think of courtroom, think of military, think of political, think of regional chiefs and chieftains of tribes. That, that's the mindset. And God raises up men and women to be judges for the purpose of liberating, bringing freedom from the oppressors, from the Philistines, from the Amalekites, the, the, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, and ites, 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 all the ites. <laughs> Bring freedom through a judge. The judge had a purpose. Create on purpose for a purpose. Bring freedom. So we're going to read about Samson. I want you to write this down. It will not be on the screen. Put it in your notes. There's four things that Samson's life shows us very clearly. The presence of God, the sinfulness of people, the spirit of God, and self-sacrifice. Okay? I'm going to say it again. Say it after me. Say presence of God, sinfulness of people, the Spirit of God and self-sacrifice. Samson's life is going to show us these four things more clearly than any other judge. Now, today, in the time that we have, I'm going to read some verses that give us Samson's story, but Samson's story is actually recorded in Judges 13, 14, 15, and 16. So, how many of you have been enjoying the Bible reading plan we've been doing as a church? I've been loving it. I love seeing what you're putting up there. We have over 40 people every week joining a new plan. Tomorrow, we're starting a plan on Samson. BlazeChurch.org slash Bible. And you'll get a notification about it tomorrow as well. But we're going to read Judges 13, 14, 15, 16 throughout this week and learn. But today, I'm going to read a few verses to give you his story. So, in the days, in those days, a man named Manoah. Say Manoah. Manoah, Manoah not manure. Okay. <laughs> You know he was teased as a kid, all right? Some of you think your name's bad. Manoah, from the tribe of Dan, lived in the town of Zorah. His wife, now look at this, was unable to become pregnant, and they had no children. Some of you can relate, 
immediately to Manoah's wife, unable to have children, trying and being broken again and again, and the pain and the heartache. And here's Manoah's wife, unable to have children. She's in a broken state. And how many know God works through broken vessels? In fact, when you read the stories of the Bible, we see more often than not that God chooses the weak to show how strong he is. That God chooses those things that are foolish to show how wise he is. And God finds the hurting, the pain filled and says, through you, I will bring beauty. So God could have chose anybody. God looks at Manoah's wife who can't have a baby and he's about to do something miraculous. <laughs> so can I just tell you, if you are in a state of pain today, if you are broken, if you are hurting, you are primed for the miraculous. That's right. That's right. He's gracious. So it says, then the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son. What a declaration. What an announcement. Acknowledging what can't happen and declaring, but with God, all things are possible. You're about to have a son. Now, there's a unique purpose to this person's life, just like there's a unique purpose, purpose to your life. Right. Every person has a purpose. There's one big purpose we all fill, and then God allows us to live out our assignments. Let me show you. So be careful. You must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink, nor eat any forbidden food. Now, we're, we're reading ancient literature. So we would understand, say, okay, that makes sense. We know that when you're pregnant, having alcohol ain't safe for the baby. But this is actually beyond that. This isn't, this isn't the purpose. There's a, there's a unique purpose. Because watch the next thing. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and his hair must never be cut. Okay, why is that? For he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth, he will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. So Samson, that'll be his name, we'll find that out. Manoah's wife's son is gonna be set apart for a purpose. Say purpose. purpose. And his purpose is to begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. And there's a very unique call on his life, the Nazarite vow. And the Nazarite vow included three things. Don't touch dead things. Don't drink alcohol. And don't cut your hair. A little weird, right? A little weird. I remember when Nate was a baby. How many of you knew my son when he was younger? That boy had curls for days. Look at this. I think we got some pictures. Look at this kid. Are you kidding me? My goodness. Made me want to have another one. Then we stopped. <laughs> Curls for days. And we knew if we cut that hair, it's not going to grow back the same. But we have faith in a God of miracles. It said, in the name of Jesus, the hair will grow back curly. Cut that hair. A miracle didn't happen. <laughs> the boys. <laughs> now, when it comes to Samson, he's told no wine no dead things, no haircuts. It's very clear the call and the command on his life. He was a Nazarite. Now, when Amy and I were talking about this, in my whole house, they hear the sermon. They got to hear it a few times and tell me if it's good or not. She said, wait, Nazarite, like Jesus was from Nazareth. Is that, is that the vow? I was like, girl, the first miracle he did was to get wine. <laughs> he wasn't a Nazarite, all right? He was from Nazareth. So just don't confuse the two. Samson is a Nazarite. I want you to remember this, it's gonna matter. Very clear purpose. Liberate Israel from the Philistines. Don't cut your hair. Don't drink wine. Don't touch dead things, okay? So the angel tells Manoah's wife all of this, and she goes and tells her husband, and her husband doesn't believe 
Because you know us guys, we just, it takes a little longer. Just need a little more convincing. So the angel shows up again, this time to Manoah. And this is, this is just funny. That's why I want to read it. Here's what Manoah says. Verse 22. We are doomed to die, he said to his wife. We have seen God. Manoah bugs out. <laughs> We're going to die. God's here. Now, maybe for you today, what's kept you away from church for so long is you've thought God doesn't love me. God is angry with me. God is upset with me. If I go to church, that whole building's going up in flames the second I walk in. And I just want you to look around for a minute because I don't see no smoke. You're here, God's here, and he loves you. And he's not upset with you. In fact, his heart is thrilled right now that you would be here to hear about his love. So Manoah's all, we're gonna die. And then Manoah's wife speaks and she goes, but, but she answered, if the Lord had meant to kill us, he would, have, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and grain offering from our hands, nor shown us all these things or told us this. Like, come on, man, think rationally. If God wanted to kill us, he would have done it. So you know what I wanna say to you? If you feel like Manoah today, and you think that God is just out to get you, if you're not dead, God's not done. That's right. And he loves you. And if he planned to kill you, you would have already been dead. He loves you. He's got you. And you get to come to him today. So the call of Samson begins with grace. Here it says in the next verse, when her son was born, she named him Samson and the Lord blessed him as he grew up. Watch this. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he lived in Mahanane, Dan, which is located between the towns of Zorah and Eshtael. So I just want you to understand to fulfill your purpose, you and I need the spirit of the Lord. You can't do it on your own. That's why Jesus said, when I leave, I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit. And I want you to remember where we are. We're in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit did not first come in Acts chapter two. The Holy Spirit's been stirring the people of God all along. The beauty now is that every believer has access to the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. So while it was unique and specific, the Spirit came on Samson. The Spirit came on David. The Spirit came on Solomon. Now, the Spirit's available for every believer. Amen. You and I need to be Spirit-filled to live the life God's called us to live. Yes. So, my boy is set up. He's got his orders. Don't touch dead things. Don't drink wine. Don't cut your hair. He's got his purpose. Liberate Israel from the Philistines. He's got the Spirit of God. So the next verse should be, Samson did it. He did it. So what's the next verse say? One day when Samson was in Timnah, one of the Philistine women caught his eye. Everybody say, no, no, no. Come on, don't do it, Samson. Sammy, I gotta talk to you. Don't do it. Keep your head down. Walk the straight and narrow. Don't be looking around. But one day, she caught his eye because Samson's life will show us the sinfulness of people who need a savior. Remember, the presence of God, sinfulness of people, the spirit of God, and self-sacrifice. His life is gonna show us this. And so here it is. Samson is walking around not with intentionality. He's not focused. And a woman catches his eye. And Samson, from that point on, and we're gonna read it this week, Samson breaks his vow. All three points. He touches a dead thing. He scoops honey out of a lion carcass. He gives people opportunity to drink and he goes into a vineyard. And he gets a haircut. Bro, this was so easy. <laughs> Just don't do these three things. Got it. Let's go over this. You got it? Got it. So what are you going to do? I'm going to go touch that dead lion. <laughs> are you kidding me? 
Let's go over this. So what are you going to do? I'm going to get people drunk. Bro, what are you going to do? I think I'm going to get a haircut. <laughs> do you not read the Bible? You are in the Bible. <laughs> read about yourself. <laughs> but you know what we do, guys? The same thing Samson does. Come on, let's not sit here and say, how could he? When God has told you, forgive that person, and you say, oh, you must be talking about another person. Jesus, they're a Democrat. <laughs> you didn't mean that. Forgive them. <laughs> Show love. No, no, they're a Republican. <laughs> Give your money away. Help the poor. Honor me in your relationships. Serve. No, you can't mean that. No, I do. Like, follow me. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Come on, we struggle with this. And Samson, he not only breaks his vow, he just lives a life that's contrary to God's plan. He pursues a woman who's not his wife and not even an Israelite. Then we read he pursues a prostitute. We read that he acts out of arrogance over and over and over again out of his pride. He's violent beyond anything God would have commissioned a judge to be. So watch this. Samson is a picture of someone physically strong and spiritually weak. He's got all the muscles. He's got, he's got the strength, but not spiritually. Spiritually weak. The title of my message today is The Strongest Blind Man. Because while Samson may have looked like he had eyes to see, he actually was not seeing at all spiritually blind. And it gets to the point where his indifference lands him with Delilah. You've heard the story. Hey there, Delilah, what's it like? <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing a plain white tee. <laughs> I'll be, thank, thank you. Right? And he just gets to this moment where he don't care. And he shares his vow. And the tragic verse says, the Lord leaves him. The Lord leaves him. His power wasn't in the hair. The power was in the spirit of God. And he pushed so hard against God's invitation to live for him. Okay, you don't want to live for me? I'm not, like, fine, I will leave. Some of you, you got to understand, February 4th, like this might be one of your last chances. I'm not trying to scare you into Jesus, but it's a reality. Who here knows that they're going to get in their car and make it home? 100%. Okay. So maybe God, by his grace, has been calling you and calling you. And hey, what do we say? If you're not dead, what? God's not. Come to him. Come to him. Stop pushing against him. He loves you so much. He's got the best plan for you. Samson, over and over and over. And he finally gets to the point where he just doesn't care and God leaves him. And then the Philistines seize him, it says in verse 21. They gouge out his eyes and took him down to Gaza, by blind, binding him, so he's blind and bound, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding grain in the prison. So watch this, because Samson's whole story, this, this is kind of how I like to look at him. It's just a story of blindness. It's just a story of someone who thought they could see but lived for themselves and was spiritually blind and ultimately now physically blind. Literally, his body now represents the state of his soul. You chose for so long to not live the path I put out for you. It was so clear. And now here you are physically blind. So I need you to write this down because this is for you and the Holy Spirit this week. Are there areas in my life where I am living blind? Are there areas in my life where I'm living blind? You pray that prayer, the Holy Spirit will show you. Hey, you, you know what I've called you to do when it comes to that relationship. You know what I've called you to do when it comes to that person. You, you know my plan for you with your finances. You know what I wanna work out in you at your job. So where am I blind, Holy Spirit? He'll show you, and that's his grace and an opportunity for you to say, okay, now give me sight. <laughs> give, give me eyes to see. So Jesus speaks to a collective of believers, a church, directly through John in Revelation, and he calls out their blindness. Look at his words. We can learn from this. He says, I know your deeds. You're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. 
come on, Samson. Come on, get it. Either, either you want me or you don't want me. Why are you living so indifferent? Why are you claiming you have eyes when you're not actually using them? He says, you say I'm rich. I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. So Jesus is looking at a church. This is a church. So if you're not a Christian right now, these words are not directed towards you. Understand that. He's looking at a church, those that claim faith in him. And he's saying, you think you can see, but you can't see. You think you're clothed, but you're naked. You think you're rich, but you're poor. So then he says, so I advise you. I'm trying to help you out because I'm gracious. I'm kind. I'm merciful. Here's my advice. Buy gold from me. Stop using that stuff you think is gold. It's not. The things around you were never meant to satisfy you. It is a bucket with holes in it. It is currency that don't work. He says, buy gold from me. It's been purified. You'll be rich. You want to be rich? Come take my currency. Get you some citizens, not citizens bank. I need citizens of heaven bank, right? I, I need money from the kingdom of God, his values, his principles. Hey, you should also buy white garments from me because you think you're covering up your nakedness with your good works and it's not working. I see right through it. You need a white robe from me. Stop playing the game. And, and I've got ointment for your eyes so that you can see. My goodness. Now, if Jesus is here and notice his words, buy from me gold, buy from me some white clothes, buy from me some ointment. I'm standing over here saying, Jesus, what in the world could I use to buy things from you? <laughs> what can I offer you? And this is the gospel. The way that we receive from Jesus is not with anything we have in our hands. It's actually what he has in his hands. So he's got, look at this. He's got the gold, the garment, and the ointment. And he's saying, you need to buy this for me. And we're over here saying, but I can't afford it. He's like, I know. So I'm actually gonna buy it from me for you. What? I'm gonna buy from me what you need because I love you. So Peter says, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. You don't find salvation from that empty way. You think it's gold, but it's not. You think it's a robe, but it's not. You think you can see, but you can't. He said, that's not what you're gonna get. And you can't buy that. Only, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Can you give God a shout of praise that the lamb has shed his blood so that you and I, so Jesus goes, buy this stuff for me. We go, Jesus, I can't afford it. He goes, I know. So I'll shed my blood. By my blood, I will give you gold refined in fire. I will give you a white robe of righteousness and I will give you ointment so that you can see life clearly. You wanna know your purpose? You gotta know God. It starts with knowing God. He says this to the church. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So hear this. If this sounds harsh, it's not because he's harsh. It's because he loves you. It's because how could a loving God want you to walk around blind and in darkness? He's saying, I'm trying to, we say discipline this way in our house. Discipline is get you back on the path. Bro, we got to get you back on the path. That's what discipline does. It goes in the direction of restoration. Going to get you back on the path. Hey, why? Because I love you. So be diligent, Blaze Church. Turn from your indifference. Let's not be indifferent today. So today is a freedom day. Today is a turning day. February 4th, for all of us, the Holy Spirit's saying, I need you to turn towards me in this area of your life. I need you to trust me here. You think you can see, but you can't. And I brought you here today to let you know I got ointment for your eyes. I've got it for you. That's the King of Kings. So how does Samson's story end? Here he is blind and in bondage. And the people of Philistia, the Philistines, say, let's bring him out to celebrate to Dagon, our God, that we won. And blind, bound Samson, rocking a buzz cut. Hair's just starting to grow back. Comes out, led, and is positioned between two center columns in the temple of Dagon. 
And Samson, don't miss this because this is for you. On his deathbed, does something that you and I can do today out of desperation. He cries out to God. If you're not dead, God's not done. There's still breath in your lungs. There's still time. He's got a plan. It says, then Samson prayed to the Lord, sovereign Lord, remember me again. What a prayer. You don't know what to pray when you hit rock bottom. You don't know what to pray when you get a diagnosis you weren't expecting. You don't know what to pray when the relationship falls apart, when the children leave, when the job is gone. Oh God, remember me. Oh, sovereign Lord, the one who knew this would happen, remember me again. Because I've called out to you so many times. Is there any more second chances left for me? Remember me again. Strengthen me one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Do you know what that means? Don't get it twisted. He's not acting in violence or vengeance. He's finally realized his purpose. God, you said it before I was born bring freedom to the people of Israel. And I missed it my whole life. And I made it all about me. But if you would remember me now, if you would hear from heaven, I will do your will. And then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple and pushing against them with both hands. Do you know what he does? He prayed. He prays. Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. On a deathbed, at rock bottom, in a moment of desperation, sovereign Lord, remember me because I can't do this on my own because I might have got me here, but you can get me out. Because somebody say thank you, Jesus, right now for that. Man, he's not done with you. You're here for a reason today in this moment. Why won't you cry out, remember me? When you cry that out, he will. Not so that you can go on living the same way, but so that you can fulfill your purpose. And Samson does. And in an act of self-sacrifice, he fulfills his purpose and he dies. And we are left waiting for a true and better judge. And we have one in Jesus. Because Jesus was not blind, but he came to give sight to the blind. And Jesus, like Samson, was bound up and stood in front of a mocking crowd and Jesus, like Samson, was humiliated. And Jesus, like Samson, said, I will sacrifice myself to bring salvation for the people. And Jesus identifies with our bondage and sin. And Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. Sovereign Lord. Bible stories for grownups shows us that everything points to King Jesus. You have the best judge. In fact, he came into the world to give you sight. Here's his words. I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Stop acting like you can see. Keith, stop thinking you can see everything. You can't, but God can. And if you keep claiming you have sight when you don't, you're refusing the ointment of our Savior. And he's saying, I came for those who know they are blind. In fact, he reads from the prophet Isaiah and says, this is all about me. Look at this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. So the spirit of God that was on Samson, Jesus says, that spirit's on me. You want to know my purpose? Here it is. He's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. Say this with me. And that the blind will see. It's why he came. 
that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. How many are grateful that we live in the time of the Lord's favor today? That God's favor has come and that we don't got to live bound up. We get to live free and we get to see. The book of Judges ends in a shocking way and this should not be the way your life ends. It says, in those days, Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. The whole thing's about seeing. (laughs) Samson thought he could see and ultimately God had to literally get his eyeballs removed from his head (laughs) to get him to see you can't see. And the people of Israel had no king. So they did what they thought was right. Hey, you and I have the king of kings. So we don't have to do what we think's right in our own eyes. You don't know what to do? Ask the Lord. Because I'm sure he'll tell you what to do. I want to read to you the words of Paul, a prayer he prayed for believers. This is my prayer for you. If I'm your pastor or if we're strangers and we're just meeting, I have this prayer for you. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. I'm so glad you're here. And I pray that your eyes, not these, the eyes of your heart, the place that you're trying to figure out life, you're trying to figure out why is this not working? What's my purpose? Why am I here? That place, they would be opened to see your purpose. And it's right there to know the hope, to know the hope. We exist in this community to blaze the trail for lost people to meet Jesus. And we believe on that trail, the first stop is know God. You gotta know God. You wanna know your purpose? It begins with knowing him. And Jesus has done everything that's necessary for you to know God. Now, I want to ask you to take out your phone for a minute. Play along with me. Get your phone. If you don't have a phone, today's first time guest gift is a phone. So we'll give you a phone in the back of the room. Somebody go buy some phones for these guests. (laughs) Take out your phone for a minute. If you want, no pressure in this place. But I want you to text the single word, my purpose. Text my purpose to 97,000. My purpose, if you want. And what it's going to text you back is a link for you to begin watching videos to help you discover your purpose, to discover who God is, who we are as a reflection of God in this community, a church, and for you to discover your unique purpose because you have one. We call this the growth track at Blaze Church. And let me tell you, the growth track is not just a way to get on the dream team. That's not the purpose of the growth track. The purpose of the growth track is for you to discover your purpose. Those people we celebrated today, They went through step one of the growth track to say, okay, I want to understand more about who God is, who the church is, and who I am. So look, Super Bowl is not till next week. We got the Pro Bowl today. Watch some fun stuff, but go binge the growth track, everybody. Go watch some videos and discover your purpose and figure out why you're here and who God is and how it intersects in your life and how when you know your purpose and I know my purpose and we know our purpose, we get to reach a whole lot more lost people for Jesus. And that's what it's about so that they might come to know him. So to Mark Twain's question or statement, today might be a great day for you because you know why you were made, to know him, to love him, to be loved by him. I wanna end by praying and ask the worship team to come and then we're gonna celebrate communion together as a remembrance that he's the one who died and rose again so that we might be forgiven But I want to ask you today, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you committed your life to him? Scripture says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hey, February 4th is a born again day for some of you. I believe that, that right now in this moment, you get to call on the name of the Lord and be saved. And I want to give you opportunity to do that because you've heard the gospel. Apart from Jesus, we stand over here poor, naked, and blind. But because he shed his blood, we are rich. We are clothed in righteousness. 
we see clearly. I'm gonna ask you to bow your head right now to create a private space for the person sitting next to you. If you wanna know Jesus today, I wanna ask you, you never made this decision. You've never called on his name. Don't let this moment pass you by without saying, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. You wanna be saved and ask you to raise your hand right now. It's an act of boldness. It's an act of confidence and surrender. You can raise your hand and then slip it back down. If you're saying, Jesus, I want to be saved. Forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord of my life. He is your God. He loves you. As a church community now, we are gonna pray together. And I'm gonna ask you with your hand lifted to say this prayer. The power is not in the prayer. The power is in the person, Jesus. Let's call on his name. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died and rose again so I could be forgiven. Thank you for new life. Today I surrender mine. In your name, amen. Now let's clap our hands because heaven is. Because God says when one person accepts Jesus, all of heaven rejoices. And I want you to know heaven's rejoicing.